What really got his attention was the Lombrosian concept of misoneism. Radicals, militants, revolutionaries, however they styled themselves, all sinned against this deep organic human principle, which Lombroso had named after the Greek for hatred of anything new. It operated as a feedback device to keep societies coming along safely, coherently. Any sudden attempt to change things would be answered by an immediate misoneistic backlash, not only from the state, but from the people themselves. Nixon's election in 68 seeming to Brock a perfect example of this. Hello, and welcome to Read Read. Today I am talking about Vineland, another of Pinchon's novels, uh, which more or less marks my halfway point in terms of reading Pinchon. Uh, if you guys know the sort of Dunning-Kruger uh, scope that looks like an, an Adidas tick, uh, or Adidas tick, depending on where you come from. Um, that's almost my reading journey with Pinchon. Uh, I started with Gravity's Rainbow and then read a lot of the smaller, lighter books. So Lot 49, um, which I actually personally think was better, uh, was is the best book, um, but that's just because it resonated with me really well. Um, uh, I've read Inherent Vice, Vineland, and also Slow Learners, and hopefully next year on the uh, uptick, I'll be um, picking up Mason and Dixon and Against the Day. I still haven't bought uh, Bleeding Edge, but that's the last one I need to own. Um, today I'm talking about Vineland, which I one of the one of the goals going into this was that I knew that it was a uh, well described pinch on light novel, um, and I was wondering uh, if it were one of the questions I wanted to ask or wanted to find out was whether this would be a really good entry point because. Again, I still subscribe to the fact that if you want to be dazzled by Pinchon in as quickly a period of time as possible, um, Lot 49 is, is still just the way to go. Um, after reading this, I'm really on the fence as to whether uh, if you're not going to go for Lot 49, you go for Inherent Vice or you go for this. Um, Inherent Vice very much executes on some of the concepts that are in this book better, but it is also a bit... Uh, quite a bit more complicated of a book, I think, um, in terms of actual, like, literal plot uh, plot things going on. There's, um, the, the paranoia is sort of explored a bit more, and the drug culture is explored a little bit more, so if those are the two reasons you're wanting to get into it, then maybe Inherent Vice is the better of these two books, um, but this is still, I think, a stand-up, I mean, it's it's un it's both unmistakably pinch on and it's unmistakably not his best work uh, which yeah it's just adds to the canon um, but this is book sort of came out of pinch on <clears throat> I guess meditating on uh, like that quote talked about Nixon uh, Nixon uh, but really it's set in 84 around uh, Reagan's re-election from what I know, again, I'm not American, so I'm not too interested in American politics, um, but focusing especially on the war on drugs. Um, the main character, who I'm going to get to uh, being Zoid, um, again, I'm not really going to talk about plot. Uh, this book doesn't even have a, a blurb. These are all just author testimonials, um, which is kind of funny. Um, the plot really is revolving around characters that are manifestations of certain ideas and ideals. So, Frenisi... Uh, 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 Frenisi and Zoid, early Frenisi and Zoid being sort of manifestations of the the drugs, <laughs> the the of which are being warred upon uh, by uh, people like Brock Vond, who are almost just like manifestations of the kind of Reagan initiative to just like go and cancel cancel the the, the love, um, the love and drugs. Uh, which is an idea that I, I kind of like. I, I remember being a lot younger and thinking about stories where people were just allegories for entire countries or entire things. Um, and I didn't know how well that would work. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's been done before. Um, I think people like, uh, like R.F. Kuang's Cop The Poppy War uh, is a little bit like it's a fantasy book but it's it's talking about um, uh, talking about Chinese history uh, yeah in this book that idea is sort of executed where all of the um, kind of energy of Reagan's war on politics is distilled into Brock Vond um, and uh Zoid kind of represents the people who s were like, I'm going to stubbornly go down. Um, like, I'm just going to, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to cave. I'm going to sort of 
be open to being ridiculed for being what I am because you've won, more or less, um, uh, but I'm not going to change who I am. And for Nisi, is someone who, uh, like, kind of uh, is succumbs to it. She goes over to the side of Brock Bond. Um, uh, in terms of the techniques, I think one thing Vineland does, uh, in terms of writing techniques, one thing Vineland does better than probably any other novel is this going down deeper and this sort of fractalization. because, yes, Gravity's Rainbow is extremely just like, uh, it's almost like all of the fractals you're experiencing at one point all the way through. Um, and it's an episodic book, you're jumping between uh, characters and so on and so forth, but the other books, uh, so Lot 49 is still so centered around Oedipa Mars, uh, Inherent Vice with Doc Sportello, and I swear I've read another one, am I just going crazy? Uh, Rose Rainbow, Inherent Vice, well, I guess Slow Learners, but those, those are just the short stories. Um, Vineland, however, doesn't really have a main character so much as it has a main thread. Um, Arguably, Frenisi is the main character because every single character revolves around her uh, in some way, shape, or form. But, for example, first page, first paragraph, you're introduced to Zoid, uh, who is just your lovable uh, kind of almost, uh, I feel like, author insert in the same way that um, uh, Doc Sportello is a bit of an author insert. Um, but you, from Zoid, you get introduced to his daughter, Prairie, and... Prairie gets a card from Zoid uh, of, like, uh, Takeshi, who gets called uh, to sort of, like, help in times of need whenever it's close by, but Takeshi doesn't actually get called, a ninja whose name's DT gets called, and so her and Prairie kind of team up, and they split off from Zoid, um, and you would think you'd be jumping back and forth, but really, no, like, Zoid vanishes from this book for, like, 200 pages, and I actually remember verbally saying in one section, like, where the fuck is Zoid? He's just not been mentioned for so long. Um, but that's because you'll get introduced to Zoid and DT. Uh, uh, you'll get introduced to Prairie and DT. They'll go together, they'll... Prairie wants to learn more about Frenisi, um, and so DT will be like, well, yeah, we were in this uh, People's Republic of Rock and Roll together. Uh, we were making these films. You'll go into these films, and you'll be watching the films play out, knowing all the while that um, Prairie and DT in real time are watching these films. Um, but these films will go in, and then in the characters in those films, you'll go deeper and deeper. So that is... And Pinchon really pulls it off. You never, you never ever lose track of what's going on. Um, and he doesn't even need to give the obligatory, like... Uh, Oh, you know, here we are back in back in real world, just like a conversation. It does come up sometimes when it's relevant, but Pinchon really trusts that you will be able to track down, 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 and follow uh, follow the strings all the way. Um, however, there one thing that I I feel like he, uh, was a little bit lacking in this book, n not necessarily uh, lacking in that it's not absent, but just in that it did, it wasn't pulled off. Uh, as much as Lot 49, where um, Pinchon's crafting the perfect sentence. Uh, however, I do feel like he really leans into his comedy and his 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 humour, as opposed to just, like, the really great um, Oedipa Mars finding the, the DT uh, um, sailor with the, with the tattoo on... with the, the, the trumpet tattoo on his hand. Um, however, these tags are... A lot of them are just uh, actually really funny things that... Uh, Pinchon has got so one of the funny things, uh, I'll, and I'll just read a couple of them off the top of my head. That that uh, oh, oh, not off the top of my head, but just um ones that I flick to. Zoid went sweaty and had one of those gotta shit throbs of fear. Was it ESP? Was he only reacting to something in his friend's voice? Somehow he knew who it would be. Um, and he's talking about a DIA agent, a uh, Hector uh, Zuniga, uh, who gets introduced to. Oh my God, that sound is going to get. Uh, uh, flagged by YouTube. Anyway, um, uh, I'll skip through. Uh, talking about Frenisi and Zoid getting married. Frenisi Margaret, Zoid Herbert, will you, for real, in trouble or in trippiness, pr promise to remain always on the groovy high known as love? Their friendship over the years was based in part on each pretending to laugh at each other's hard luck. 
uh, oh, this is a great one. So Zoid, um, Zoid's daughter Prairie works at a Bodhidharma Pizza Temple. Zoid was both a certified pizza maniac and a cheapskate, but not once had he ever hustled Prairie for one nepotistic slice of the Bodhidharma product. Its sauce was all but crunchy, with fistfuls of herbs only marginally Italian and more appropriate in a cough remedy. The renantless cheese reminded customers variously of bottled hollandaise or joint compound, uh, and the options were all vegetables rigorously organic, whose high water content saturated long before it baked through a stone ground 12 grain crust with the lightness and digestion digestibility of a manhole cover that sentence is so funny firstly um but it is so indicative of oh it's lying over there uh infinite jest um that is such a david foster wallace sentence that i can so see how clearly uh, he's been influenced by pinch on in that just one single sentence um uh, uh and yeah uh, oh i'll just keep going um, Sasha never having really known, oh, sorry, uh, introduction. Sasha is, um, uh, Zoid's mother-in-law, Frenisi's mother. Sasha never having known really what to make of Zoid, settling instead for a reflexive handshake whenever they met with an embarrassed laugh that seemed to mean, you are so inappropriate for my daughter that even you must see it and be as amused as I am. We're adults after all, and we can certainly share a chuckle, can't we, Zoid? This is a cool one, um, and again, I'm really in this by seeing Infinite Jest, and a big theme of Infinite Jest is uh, filmmaking, um, for obvious reasons. Uh, Prairie is watching Frenisi's films, uh, specifically Frenisi behind the camera. At some point, Prairie understood that the person behind the camera most of the time really was her mother, and that if she kept her mind empty, she could absorb, conditionally become Frenisi, share her eyes, feel when the frame shook with fatigue or fear or nausea. Frenisi's whole body was Frenisi's whole body there, as much as her mind choosing the frame, her will to go out there, load the roll, get the shot. Prairie floated, ghostly light of head, ghostly light of head, as if Frenisi were dead, but in a special way, a minimum security arrangement where limited visits mediated by projector and screen were possible, as if somehow next reel or or the one up after the girl would find a way, some way, to speak with her. And that's cool because it does tie a little bit into the whole Thanatoids uh, who come in, who are sort of uh, dead but not dead. They're in this bardo, indeterminate state. Um, well, actually, uh, right here. We are assured by the bardo uh, thurdal, or Tibetan Book of the Dead, that the soul newly in transition doesn't like to admit indeed will deny quite vehemently that it's really dead, having slipped so effortlessly into the new dispensation that it finds no difference uh, uh, between the weirdness of life and the weirdness of death, an enhancing factor in Takeshi's opinion being television, which with its history of picking away at the topic with doctor's shows, war shows, cop shows, murder shows, had trivialized the big D itself. If mediated lives, he figured, why not mediated deaths? Yeah, so there's just a couple of uh, the standout snippets from Vineland. Um, is it worth reading? I'm I'm slowly becoming uh, convinced that all Pinchon is worth reading. Um, so I'm definitely going to be sinking through. I don't think it was a I don't think it was a waste of time or anything. Um, and uh, but I am definitely keen to kind of move on to some of the better Pinchons. And I know, oh man, I've kind of done myself a favor by saving saving some of the best for last. Um, I know I'm gonna like Mason and Dixon, um, but give me some uh, give me some of your thoughts on Vineland. I know there's some context I don't uh, really have, not being uh, American, so um, uh, I'm more than happy to hear your comments uh, and so on and so forth about it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.